Ezra, also called Ezra the scribe and Ezra the priest in the book of Ezra, was a Jewish scribe and a priest. According to the Hebrew Bible he returned from the Babylonian exile and reintroduced the Torah in Jerusalem. According to 1 ESD Ras, a Greek translation of the book of Ezra still in use in Eastern Orthodoxy, he was also a high priest. Several traditions have developed over his place of burial. One tradition says that he is buried in Aluzair near Basra, while another tradition alleges that he is buried in Tadif near Aleppo, in northern Syria. His name may be an abbreviation of Azaria who, God helps. In the Greek Septuagint the name is rendered D.E.S.D. Ras, from which the Latin name E.S.D. Ras comes. The Book of Ezra describes how he led a group of Judean exiles living in Babylon to their home city of Jerusalem where he is said to have enforced observance of the Torah. He was described as exhorting the Israeli people to be sure to follow the Torah law so as not to intermarry with people of particular different religions. A set of commandments described in the Pentateuch, Ezra, known as Ezra the scribe in Chazalic literature, is a highly respected figure in Judaism. In the Hebrew Bible, the canonical book of Ezra and book of Nehemiah are the oldest sources for the activity of Ezra, whereas many of the other books ascribed to Ezra are later literary works dependent on the canonical books of Ezra and Nehemiah. Book of Ezra and Nehemiah The books of Ezra and Nehemiah were originally one scroll. Later the Jews divided this scroll and called it first and second Ezra. Modern Hebrew Bibles call the two books Ezra and Nehemiah, as do other modern Bible translations. A few parts of the book of Ezra were written in Aramaic, and the majority in Hebrew, Ezra himself being skilled in both languages. Ezra, a descendant of Sarai the high priest, was living in Babylon when in the seventh year of Artaxerxes, king of Persia, the king sent him to Jerusalem to teach the laws of God to any who did not know them. Ezra led a large body of exiles back to Jerusalem, where he discovered that Jewish men had been marrying non-Jewish women. He tore his garments in despair and confessed the sins of Israel before God then braved the opposition of some of his own countrymen to purify the community by enforcing the dissolution of the sinful marriages. Some years later Artaxerxes sent Nehemiah to Jerusalem as governor with the task of rebuilding the city walls. Once this task was completed Nehemiah had Ezra read the law of Moses to the assembled Israelites and the people and priests entered into a covenant to keep the law and separate themselves from all other peoples. In later Second Temple period literature, 1 ESD Ras 1 ESD Ras, probably from the late 2nd, early 1st centuries BCE, preserves a Greek text of Ezra and a part of Nehemiah distinctly different from that of Ezra and Nehemiah. In particular it eliminates Nehemiah from the story and gives some of his deeds to Ezra, as well as telling events in a different order. Scholars are divided on whether it is based on Ezra and Nehemiah, or reflects an earlier literary stage before the combination of Ezra and Nehemiah accounts. Josephus, the first century Jewish historian, Josephus, deals with Ezra in his Antiquities of the Jews. He preferred 1 ESD Ras over the canonical Ezra Nehemiah and placed Ezra as a contemporary of Xerxes, son of Darius, rather than of Artaxerxes. The Apocalyptic Ezra Traditions The Apocalyptic Fourth Book of Ezra was written in c. AD 100, probably in Hebrew Aramaic. It was one of the most important sources for Jewish theology at the end of the first century. In this book, Ezra has a seven-part prophetic revelation, converses with an angel or God three times and has four visions. Ezra, 30 years into the Babylonian exile, recounts the siege of Jerusalem and the destruction of Solomon's temple. This would place these revelations in the year 557 BC, a full century before the date given in the canonical Ezra. The central theological themes are, the question of Theodicy, God's justness in the face of the triumph of the heathens over the pious the course of world history in terms of the teaching of the four kingdoms, the function of the law, the eschatological judgment, 
the appearance on earth of the heavenly Jerusalem, the messianic period, at the end of which the Messiah will die, the end of this world and the coming of the next, and the last judgment, Ezra restores the law that was destroyed with the burning of the temple in Jerusalem. He dictates 24 books for the public and another 70 for the wise alone. At the end, he is taken up to heaven like Enoch and Elijah. Ezra is seen as a new Moses in this book. There is also another work, thought to be influenced by this one, known as the Greek Apocalypse of Ezra. Ezra in rabbinic literature. Traditionally Judaism credits Ezra with establishing the great assembly of scholars and prophets, the forerunner of the Sanhedrin, as the authority on matters of religious law. The Great Assembly is credited with establishing numerous features of contemporary traditional Judaism in something like their present form, including Torah reading, the Amidah, and celebration of the Feast of Purim. In rabbinic traditions, Ezra is metaphorically referred to as the flowers that appear on the earth signifying the springtime in the national history of Judaism. A disciple of Baruch ben Neria, he favored study of the law over the reconstruction of the temple and thus because of his studies. He did not join the first party returning to Jerusalem in the reign of Cyrus. According to another opinion, he did not join the first party so as not to compete, even involuntarily, with Jeshua ben Josadak for the office of chief priest. According to Jewish tradition, Ezra was the writer of the books of Chronicles, and is the same prophet known also as Malachi. There is a slight controversy within rabbinic sources as to whether or not Ezra had served as Cohen Gadol. According to the Babylonian Talmud, Ezra the scribe is said to have enacted ten standing laws and orders, which are as follows. 1. That the public come together to read from the scroll of the law on Mondays and Thursdays as well as on Sabbath days during the time of the afternoon prayer, too, that the courts be opened throughout the Jewish townships on Mondays and Thursdays, 3, that women do not wait beyond Thursday to launder their clothes, because of the honor due to the Sabbath day, 4, that men would accustom themselves to eat cooked garlic on the eve of the Sabbath, 5, that women would rise up early on Friday mornings to bake bread, so that a piece of bread will be available for the poor. 6. That Jewish women in every place be girded with a wide belt, whether from the front or from behind, out of modesty. 7. That Jewish women, during their menses, wash and comb their hair three days prior to their purification in a ritual bath. 8. That the traveling merchants make regular rounds into the Jewish townships because of the honor due to the daughters of Israel. 9. That Jewish women and or girls, as a precautionary measure, be accustomed to conversing with one another while one of the party goes out to relieve herself in the outhouse. 10. That men who may have suffered a seminal emission be required to immerse themselves in a ritual bath before being permitted to read from the scroll of the law. In the Syrian village of Tedef, a synagogue said to be the place where Ezra stopped over has been venerated by Jews for centuries. Another tradition locates his tomb near Basra, Iraq. Ezra in Christian traditions. Early Christian writers occasionally cited Ezra as author of the apocalyptic books attributed to him. Clement of Alexandria in his Stromata referred to Ezra as an example of prophetic inspiration, quoting a section from 2 ESD Ras. Ezra in Islam. In Islam he is known as Uzair. He was mentioned in the Quran. Although he was not mentioned as one of the prophets of Islam, he is considered as one of them by some Muslim scholars based on Islamic traditions. His tomb at al uzair on the banks of the Tigris near Basra, Iraq, is a pilgrimage site for the local Marsh Arabs. Many Islamic scholars and modern Western academics do not view Uzair as Ezra, for example Professor Gordon Darnell Newby associates Uzair with Enoch and Metatron. On this Timothy Winter and Gordon Darnell Newby associate Uzair again with Enoch and by extension Metatron the creator angel or lesser Yahweh. Academic view. 
Historicity and Genealogy Mary Joan Winleith in the Oxford History of the Biblical World believes that Ezra was a historical figure whose life was enhanced in the scripture and given a theological build-up. Goster W. Alstrom argues the inconsistencies of the biblical tradition are insufficient to say that Ezra, with his central position as the father of Judaism in the Jewish tradition, has been a later literary invention. Those who argue against the historicity of Ezra argue that the presentation style of Ezra as a leader and lawgiver resembles that of Moses. There are also similarities between Ezra the priest scribe and Nehemiah the secular governor on the one hand and Joshua and Zerubbabel on the other hand. The early 2nd century BCE Jewish author Ben Sira praises Nehemiah but makes no mention of Ezra. Richard Friedman argued in his book Who Wrote the Bible that Ezra is the one who redacted the Torah and in fact effectively produced the first Torah. It was argued even if one does not accept document hypotheses, Ezra is instrumental in the start of the process of bringing the Torah together. Timeline scholars are divided over the chronological sequence of the activities of Ezra and Nehemiah. Ezra came to Jerusalem in the seventh year of Artaxerxes the king. The text does not specify whether the king in the passage refers to Artaxerxes I or to Artaxerxes II. Most scholars hold that Ezra lived during the rule of Artaxerxes I, though some have difficulties with this assumption. Nehemiah and Ezra seem to have no knowledge of each other, their missions do not overlap, however, in Nehemiah chapter 12, both are leading processions on the wall as part of the wall dedication ceremony. So, they clearly were contemporaries working together in Jerusalem at the time the wall and the city of Jerusalem was rebuilt in contrast to the previously stated viewpoint. These difficulties have led many scholars to assume that Ezra arrived in the seventh year of the rule of Artaxerxes, too, i.e., some fifty years after Nehemiah. This assumption would imply that the biblical account is not chronological. The last group of scholars regard the seventh year as a scribal error and hold that the two men were contemporaries.